Good, how are you? Reminder for our uh, media members, uh, ask that you do not shoot video here in the room. Video's available, the feed's available uh, from uh, the NCAA, so we'll ask you to not shoot video in the press conference room. And we welcome you to the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship in Memphis, where our practice and press conference day here uh, in advance of play tomorrow. Uh, we're joined by student athletes from Colgate today. The Raiders finished or come in with a record of 25 and 9. They're champions of the Patriot League. They are the 14th seed in the West. They'll play number three Baylor tomorrow at 11:40. Uh, from my left, we're joined by Keegan Records, Ryan Moffitt, also Jeff Woodward and Braden Smith, and uh, we'll open it up for questions for the student athletes. Just ask that uh, you. Uh, begin with your name and affiliation before asking your question. So just uh, raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. So for Braden and any, anyone else who wants to chime in, but uh, Braden, I just, Jeff Legwall, DSPN, I just wanted to ask you about uh, rebounding. How are you able to make such production there? Uh, as a vertically challenged guy, I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, the big guys do a great job of boxing out, and the guards come in and kind of clean up and get the board and go. So I think there's some of that, and then also just a little bit of want to um, to try and fight, get as many as rebounds as we can, limit the opponent to one shot possessions. Yeah. I'm Cody, um, WRG here in Memphis. Um, this is for all four of you fellas. Um, what does it feel like to actually, you know, finally get to Memphis and, you know, obviously the game tomorrow and everything is coming ahead now? Um, it's been great. We've had a warm welcome so far. Um, travel went smoothly. Uh, I feel in a lucky position to say that we've done this a few times. Um, so we kind of got used to the, to the travel schedule. Um, but it's been awesome so far. Excited to um, have shoot around here and practice later today. Um, but it's been all good so far. Yeah, it's always good to finally get to, you know, the, the place you're going to play. The anticipation is great. Um, you know, we played Wednesday, so we had some time to, to kind of wait and see where we're going to play. But, you know, come Sunday, find out we're going to be here. And, you know, it's really exciting. Just couldn't wait to get out of here and, you know, can't wait. It's been great so far. Yeah, it's been really cool. As Keegan said, it's nice to have done this a few times to, you know, have some expectations. It's also nice to, you know, get out of upstate New York at this time of the year and get in some warmer weather. So can't complain about that. I think getting here makes it real. Like Ryan said, we were done on Wednesday, had a lot of time, so being able to get here, get our feet on the ground makes it real, and you know we're super excited. What all you guys have done already in Memphis is a team bonding experience, but has this trip been mostly just, I guess, all about business and kind of left everything else to the side? Um, yesterday was mostly travel, um, and then you know last night we had some time to to go out to dinner as a team and, you know, everybody that came along with us. Um, I mean, so that was fun just to spend time with um, people that, you know, all worked really hard to get here and kind of just sit back and, and enjoy dinner, enjoy time with each other, with the coaching staff and, um, you know, just everybody that came with us. So that was kind of what we did last night. So, I think it's a good balance. Like, you know, you want to always enjoy this moment, enjoy the and have, have a good time with your teammates. But at a certain point here, like when we get to shoot around, it's time to, time to really start focusing and, and trying to win a game. We've we've also had some film too the last two days the last two days so you know we're still locked in for sure. Uh, Max Keller, Colgate Barstool. I was just wondering if you guys had any uh, like pregame superstitions, rituals, a certain meal you eat before every game, certain song you listen to, anything like that. Um, for me personally, I think I definitely have um, some superstition and like especially for home games. Um, but, you know, when you get on the road, it turns into a, a little different. Um, but usually we stay with the same pregame meal. Um, Dane, Coach Dane does a great job at, at setting all that up. Um, usually it's just some chicken and pasta. Um, me, personally, I switch up the music depending on mood and game, but that's just me. 
Yeah, I mean, I also listen to a, a bunch of different music, um, but I mean, I do brush my teeth before every game, um, so that's one thing, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, superstitions, um, I like to walk on the court in just my socks. Uh, I don't know, it's just like something I do like grounds me and just like makes me know that I'm there. Um, and then music-wise, uh, I'm big into like listening to like classic rock. Um, a little bit of metal in there too, uh, just kind of get me going. For me, no, no real superstitions. I would just say more routine, and then music-wise, I kind of I listen to the same playlist before every game, though. Any other questions for the student athletes? We have two right here. Jeff, I have to ask, what's the deal with the socks, and when did that start? <laughs> Uh, I don't know when it started. It was probably freshman year during COVID. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's just something I do. Like, I'll go out into the court um, pregame, and I'll just sit there or walk around a little bit and dress my socks and just kind of, you know, just get a feel. And I mean, I do it especially at home games, but I try and do it on the road as much as I can. Uh, as these guys know, I don't really like wearing, like, shoes around the hotel. I like walking around in my socks as well. It's just something, I don't know, something that I do. And I'm going to follow up. What counts as classic rock? Uh, oh. <laughs> because that means something different to everybody. Um, ah, oh, geez. So the playlist that I, I listen to a lot, it's a lot of, I, classic rock was a general term. I, I appreciate the clarification. Uh, it's a lot more metal than it is classic rock. Uh, but I guess like uh, there's a lot of Metallica in there. Um, oh, geez, you're putting me on the spot here. Um, I'm looking like a bad music listener. Um, but yeah, no, it's not as much like Journey or things like that. It's more kind of towards the, the metal side. There's some Aerosmith in there, Iron Maiden, just some stuff like that. Do a follow up, <laughs> and well, different topic. You guys have been here and you've got some experience. What would it mean to, 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 to win a game now? Uh, to, to you know, get, get past the been here, done that stage, and, and to get a win at this stage. I'll start. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that would mean everything. That's what you know. We're working towards. We've been working towards that. You know, since the summer. You know, we have a couple goals every every single year. Um, you know, we've accomplished our first two, and this is um, our third goal. We haven't been able to, to do that the last couple of years, but we've been here. We have experience. Um, and you know what better time than now to try to go out and, and get a win? I think we're prepared and we have to go out and play well tomorrow. But um, you know I think we're ready to do that and, and give it our best shot. Yeah, I agree. I think it would mean a lot, um, obviously, to all the players and the coaching staff, but um, to the school, the university, and, and Hamilton. Um, I think it would mean a lot just to everybody. I mean, it's something that you know we all. Um, it's a team goal that we've had, and we've just tried to take it one step at a time. Um, starting with the regular season championship and then Patriot League championship, and you know now it's time to, like you said, go out and win a game. We we haven't been able to do that in the past, but you know we're obviously working towards it. And it would, it, <clears throat> excuse me, it would mean a lot. Yeah, I mean I think it'd be huge. Uh, it's as these guys have said, it's been a, a goal of our team all season long, all year long, really. Um, and you know, based on our experience in the past couple of tournaments, like we've gotten, especially like thinking back to two years ago against Wisconsin, like we've gotten close. Like we know how hard it is we know how you know coach lang always says how fragile the game is like we want we know how much it takes to get there and like we want to experience the satisfaction of actually finishing the job i got nothing they they did a great job answering that any other questions for the student athletes all right seeing no more. We'll uh, let you guys go get ready for practice. Thank right, you for your time. Good luck you. tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.
We'll be joined by Coach Langle in five minutes.
perfect. Good. We are now joined by Matt Langle, head coach at Colgate. Five times he's uh, led his team to the tournament, five consecutive tournaments, coach. Uh, if you'd like, we'll let you uh, start with a statement before we get to questions. Uh, yeah, just awesome to be here. Uh, I think for, for me personally, uh, as I reflect back on, on my journey through college basketball a couple times as a player, a number of times as an assistant coach, uh, and now five times as a head coach, uh, the, the spectacle of, of March Madness in the NCAA tournament is a, an awesome thing. Uh, I know our players are, are excited to be back here to have the opportunity to compete. Uh, just like my own children, there they all grew up, you know, wanting to be a part of this. So, uh, love our team, love the journey that we've been on. It's been a, a special group to coach, and uh, very much looking forward to the opportunity tomorrow afternoon. We'll open it up for questions again. Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you and ask it again. You start with your name and media affiliation. I have one right here in the middle. Isaac Bourne, Mid Major Madness. You guys have one of the top three-point defenses in the country and you're going against one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. So how do you think that matchup is going to work, and how, what are you guys looking at going into this game? I think Baylor presents a lot of, a, a lot of uh, difficult things to prepare for, not just their three-point shooting. Um, I think they shoot with great confidence, and they have a, a usually f you know, three or three-and-a-half, four uh, very good three-point shooters on the court uh, and, a, and an extraordinary passer, I think. Um, so, so I don't know if you're going to be able to take away all of their threes. I think what we're going to try and do is, is make them as contested as possible. I think that that's what we've tried to do over the course of the season is, is not let the best shooters uh, get the most open shots. Uh, how we're able to do that because it, it's not like they can't score other ways. You've got to protect the paint. Uh, they get great penetration, which lead, leads to a lot of those open shots. So. Uh, that's got to be uh, the first thing on our on our on our checklist. Like like many other teams, I'm sure that have played Baylor over the course of the year. And raise your hand. We will uh, get you a microphone. Uh, Max Keller, Colgate Barstool. Uh, despite no students being on campus uh, for the. Patriot League semis and uh, finals. Uh, I heard Cotter L. Court was rocking. Uh, I was just wondering, what does this say to you about the program that you've built at Colgate and the support that the town gives you? Uh, yeah, it's a great question, and, and you guys look very professional. Uh, proud, of, proud of how you guys are approaching this. Um, I, I think that, um, yeah, our, our students were on spring break. Uh, we had a number of student athletes that were, were there. I think the, the understanding of what it is to be a student athlete at Colgate uh, is extraordinary, and uh, the other teams, women's hockey, men's hockey, uh, the lacrosse teams really stepped up to, to help create a, a, an incredible environment for our championship run. Um, you know, I, I don't do a lot of reflecting at this time of the year, but to look back over 13 years and, and see the pride that the community now has for, for Colgate basketball, they're, they're a huge part of, of what we do. As, as you guys know, a, a small school, 3,000 students, a village of 3,000 people, um, and for it to be a point of pride for, for those who are uh, there in Hamilton with us and, and the countless alumni and, and Colgate people that we hear from at this time of the year um, means a great deal for our program for, for what we've been able to build over a, a long term. We'll get one right here in the middle and then we'll go to the back. We'll start right here. Clay Bailey, Associated Press. Coach, we've seen a lot of coaches that have with the NIL and all the different things that are added to your duties now. How does, do you get to the point that this is not fun anymore to the point that everything falls to you? And what, what does that mean at this point in your career? Yeah, I think um, those the people who know Colgate and Colgate University, and I think it's been a big part of our success is um, we're, we're a little bit insulated. Uh, will we always be? I have no idea. We, we've been a little bit insulated from uh, the rest of the narrative of college basketball. I mean, we've got two guys in Keegan Records and, and Ryan Moffitt who have been great players over their careers. They chose to come back. Tucker Richardson, Oliver Lynch Daniels a year before that, Jack Ferguson, uh, Nellie Cummings a year before that. And so um, we have, because of the young men that we've been able to recruit, the, the families they come from, what they're looking for, um, not just in their basketball experience, but in their um, 
in their educational opportunity for that's going to affect the next 40 years of their life, not just you know the next nine months. Um, been able to create an environment and, and have guys who are very committed to the team. Um, you know, when I, when I say it's a joy to coach this group, there's they're literally no maintenance. Um, they take care of their responsibilities. Uh, they do their work um, surrounded by great coaches who, who work with these guys and not just to help them be the best basketball players they can be, but to share life lessons and, and help contribute to the men that these guys are going to become. So uh, in so many ways, my job has not changed and, and, uh, and I'm extremely grateful and thankful to, to the, the, the players in our program and the guys that we recruit and the families they come from for, for having to be that way. Ready to go right back here. Uh, Jeff Legwell, the ESPN. I'm just curious for folks who may not have seen him play a lot, but how does Braden's ability to rebound influence how you can do things? Yeah, we, we're on him constantly because, he, he, you know, he, statistically he gets a lot of rebounds. I think that it, it does help us play in transition in, in our conference, especially we've been able to play, play fast and, and, and not necessarily always have to attack a, a set defense with, with him and, and Jalen Cox, the first year, pro, first year guy in the program. Uh, they're, they're very fast with the basketball. I think that, you know, we talk about, you know, box out responsibilities and Braden doesn't always necessarily do that. He's usually guarding the, the point guard. So everybody else boxes out and he comes flying in to grab the rebound. Um, you know, maybe he gives the guys a, uh, you know, a few extra ice creams at the at the at the cafeteria or something. But um, yes, he's not like a, an incredible rebounder. He has a nose for the ball. I think it, it goes back to him being a football player growing up. He he sees the play. He sees the openings. Uh, he's quick to the ball. But it, it certainly helps us start start uh, our transition offense on the other going the other way. Stay back here. Mark Giannato from the Commercial Appeal here in Memphis. I'm just curious. Now, having been here five years in a row, um, has your approach to you know coming to a tournament game changed at all? And then, is there any sort of I don't know? I don't know if regrets the right right word because you've obviously been <laughs> getting the tournament five years in a row is quite an accomplishment. But just the fact that you haven't gotten over the hump, how does that hang over things here for your group? You know, being an experienced group. Um. I mean, you're, you're constantly tweaking and, and, and trying to figure out what's going to help your team in that year, whatever time of the year it is, you know, whether you're going to play Arizona in Arizona or um, a conference game in, in early March. Uh, so, yeah, we've changed a, a few things here and there in terms of, you know, our championship always ends on a Wednesday. So uh, uh, save the, the COVID year where we were whisked off to go to the bubble right away. Yeah, we've, we've changed our approach of what you do from that Wednesday until, you know, a whole week and change later that you're, you're playing an NCAA tournament game. Um, you know, I, we work with the experience of the guys. You know, when we first started, no, nobody had been here before. Nobody had any idea. But now, you know, our veteran guys, they've, they've done this a, a few times. So, you know, we just talk about how their, their bodies are feeling, what we need to do, you know, outside of game preparation in order to be feeling your best. I, I think that, you know, we need to play well and, and confidence is a big factor of that um, in order to win the game. As far as, I mean, when you're, you're in our position coming from our conference, you know, Lehigh won with C.J. McCollum, uh, Bucknell won, you know, a, a, a number of years before that. You have to play a special game. And, uh, you know, I think the fact that we've been here and haven't won doesn't, doesn't put any added pressure or, you know, it, it's an incredible opportunity, really a once in a lifetime situation. You're playing one of the best teams in the country. Do you have upsets happen? Absolutely. But, um, you know, I think the more times you do it, the, the better your odds are. Um, and, and that's kind of the way we approach it. We're inside our final five minutes with Coach. Come back to the front. Uh, Nick Emptage, Colgate Barstool. So you mentioned this is your uh, 13th season, and as you know, 13th uh, is a special number at Colgate. Has there been anything extra special about this season for you? The, the simple answer would be no. Um, yeah, specific to Colgate University, and we have a 13 on our court, as you guys know, but you know, founded by 13 men with $13 and 13 dreams as the lore goes. Um, I'm not a superstitious person. Um, this has been a special season, uh, not because it have anything to do with 13, because of the guys I get to coach every day, the, the coaching staff I get to work with, 
you know, all coaches who sit up here will say that it's a, a brotherhood and a, and a family that, that they have. Uh, it truly is. Uh, our, my, the players that I coach, you know, accept my children into the locker room and on road trips and the assistant coaches' families. And, and so for me, uh, it's, been, it's been an awesome uh, season and a, and a special season, uh, but no, nothing to have to do with 13. Michael Haig, Baylor Lariat. Uh, you mentioned the three-point shooting of Baylor. They're also a pretty physical team. I mean, most Big 12 teams are. Y'all played, uh, I think it was Texas last year. I mean, just what's the kind of challenge to that, I guess? Yeah, that's, that's, the physicality is a challenge. Athleticism is a challenge. Length is a, a, a challenge. Uh, speed is a challenge. Uh, Dennis's passing is a challenge. <laughs> like, there's, there's a lot of challenges in these games. I think there's going to be an adjustment period, right? We haven't played against that size, length, physicality in, in months now. And so um, how quickly you can, we can adjust to, to those things is going to be important to the game. There, there's also the, you know, this not the Big 12. It's not, it's the NCAA tournament. So, you know, the game's going to be officiated like it, they are in the NCAA tournament, not necessarily the Big 12. So um, Baylor hasn't played a, a team like us in a while. They've played teams like, you know, Texas Tech and Cincinnati and Iowa State. And so uh, there's certainly always a feeling out uh, process to this game. I think how you, how you make it out of that, that first stage of the game is, is very important for us. Any other questions? Coach, we'll uh, thank you for your time and wish you guys good luck tomorrow. Thank you. We'll be back in about 15 minutes with student athletes from Baylor.